So I went to CES this year and I went to see basically all the electric cars and the self-driving cars. And with the exception of Nissan, there really weren't any big announcements that came out from any of the major automakers. However, one trend emerged that I thought was fascinating. saw that was kind of striking to me were these pods that were everywhere and they were by companies that I hadn't ever heard of but they all had a central theme of kind of being shaped like a toaster and having a living room feel with sometimes a table in there, TVs, entertainment. Now some of the other ones even such as BMW were making cars that also had similar things where the chairs would turn around and rotate in the anticipation of a fully autonomous vehicle. The aim here is to develop fully autonomous transportation, and the approach these folks are taking is to eliminate a lot of the risks to get there faster. Sort of like putting up bumpers at the bowling alley. So the idea is that if you have a confined space, a known route or routes on a well-maintained platform and you're traveling at low speeds, you eliminate a lot of the major risks that self-driving cars face. When you're on the regular road, you have other drivers traveling at extremely high speeds and unknown road conditions. There could be construction, debris on the road, any number of unknown factors at any given time. So the challenges that a fully self-driving car on a regular road will face are tremendous. So if you can eliminate a lot of those things, then you can probably get this done faster and on the road even sooner than the more generally available self-driving cars that we're all hoping for. Check out this one from Bosch. Now Bosch doesn't really make cars, but they do make parts for almost everyone out there, including Tesla. This pod they have is really interesting in that the price of the service for each rider goes down when more people are in it, kind of like a real-time supply and demand curve, which I love. Another key is that Bosch is not only looking to develop these pods, but the software platform for booking and billing. And I think this might be a bit out of their wheelhouse, but I do wish them well, because I think in order for this to succeed, the user experience on all levels needs to be near perfect. Otherwise, people just won't adopt it. Now, Bosch was one of many to showcase these types of pods, and they all kind of had the same look and feel to them. Some had some really innovative ideas, such as this touch-sensitive fabric that BMW had, as well as some other things like, as I mentioned before, the price of the ride changing depending on how many people were on it. One key thing I really enjoyed was that they all were electric, which I love because you're talking about reducing the amount of cars on the road and switching whatever cars would have been on the road to electric forms of transportation. So are these things gonna become a reality? Well, I hope so. And as I mentioned before, if you reduce the number of variables that you have to design for, it should be a quicker and easier process to get there. So I really look forward to that. But in terms of regular full self-driving cars that you literally don't have a steering wheel, you hop in, you hit a button, or you you tell it and schedule it with your phone and it takes you where you want to go, I still think that's about 10 years or so out. There was one demo I saw that really impressed me though. This demo was from Yandex, which is a Russian company that does all kinds of things and now is making this autonomous taxi service and they demoed it at CES this year. Now I didn't get to ride in it, but fellow electric car geek and YouTuber MKBHD did take it for a spin or it took him for a spin, I guess. And what he showed was really impressive. The one hitch was that this taxi was going on a pre-planned route. It wasn't something that you could just ask it to go anywhere and it would work. So again, what you're doing is you're limiting the variables and the things that it needs to actually figure out. So in theory, they could have taken this, driven it on this route 100 times before the event started, programmed it to do that route perfectly every time, and your chances of success would be much better. Thankfully, it worked well for Marquez and he returned safely from his test ride. Digging in further, I see that their taxi service is using LiDAR, radar, cameras, GPS, and really high quality maps. All of those things combine to help the car see and understand its surroundings so then it knows how to behave. So with all that, I was still skeptical about it. And then I started looking at their demos that they posted online. This demo of the taxi service driving a guy in a snowy Moscow really stood out to me because snow is notoriously difficult to drive in, especially for humans. 
And I could imagine that from the get-go, this would be really difficult for a car to deal with as well. However, it seems to handle it perfectly. Now, this demo, of course, the roads have been plowed. It looks like they're probably salted. So they're probably the best kind of snowy conditions you could have. But in any event, I thought that this was a really impressive example from them. They even took this on a long distance test drive that was over 480 miles where the car drove 100% of the way. And that is impressive because in that distance, you're gonna encounter so many different scenarios that the car is gonna have to figure out. And I don't think this is something they could have kind of pre-programmed in there. So this is getting closer to general availability as it seems from this demo. And of course we can't forget Waymo who started opening up their self-driving taxi service in the Phoenix area to more people just a few weeks ago. And they're continuing to expand the routes and the coverage area, as well as the people that come in and use their service. So I think that is a very good approach because you're going kind of step by step, instead of making this from zero to 60 in you know, no time flat, you're, you're kind of developing it as you go and making sure that it's safe. So with all that said, I'm optimistic that self-driving cars will get here sometime soon. I still think for the US regulatory approval, different road conditions, all those kind of things, it's, it's a long way out. But we hopefully will start to see things that are almost autonomous or partly autonomous help us be safer, reduce emissions, reduce traffic, and just generally drive better. Because even on autopilot right now with the Tesla, I will say it is a far better, a more attentive driver than me and probably most people that use it. If you have it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So. All, all in all, it was exciting to see this and I am very hopeful. So we'll see kind of how these things develop and stay tuned for more here on the channel as I'll obviously be digging into it because it is a very exciting time uh, to be paying attention to this stuff. So let me know what you think. Would you ride in one of these? Are you ready for self-driving? Do you have autopilot? Has it scared you ever? Does that give you any pause? I'm very curious to hear your uh, thoughts in the comments down below. So don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. See you guys back here in the next one.